Good morning, church, and welcome back to day three of Abundant Contentment. Um, I hope you are following along as we go. And uh, it truly gives us a lot to think about um, just for the state that we're in now. And um, really, if we are content with the things that we have, if we're looking towards what really matters, um, and if we're looking to be um, living for God and being blessed by God. <clears throat> but today we're going to talk about the misconception uh, what I think, and this goes back way into ancient Jewish tradition, um, and certainly now, um, but, but back in Jewish culture, it was considered um, to be a sign that you were blessed by God if you had things. So if you had more material things, well then you must be really blessed by God. And God is only blessing His best friends, you know, so if you're really close to God, then that must mean that you have a lot of things. And it was said that it kind of went hand in hand, but people, um, well, first of all, that's that's not true at all. Um, some of the most blessed people in this world um, might not have running water or might not ever have a new car to drive, uh, but they might have the closest relationship to God. So material things in, in God um, don't go hand in hand. You can be blessed abundantly by God and not have a lot of things. Um, so we shouldn't really look to judge people to see what they have or what they don't have, but that's what the world um, kind of puts hand in hand today. And you'll see a lot of this in prosperity preaching. They'll say, you know, God wants to give you the new truck. He wants to give you a new car. Just buy my holy water online for 1995. And, and uh, we could see uh, preachers that are flying around in private jets because they don't want to, you know, travel on public transportation or, or, or all those things. So... Um, it, it goes way off. It's, a, it's an ancient culture that said that um, wealth was considered to be a sign uh, of God's blessing. But when we read the Bible, um, we see like certainly in the example of Paul's ministry um, that this isn't true. Of course, Paul was blessed uh, abundantly by God, <clears throat> but he didn't have um, a lot of things, a lot of possessions. In fact, he was the one that warned us in Scripture He's the one that said that the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money. Not being content with God, but going after money and loving it is the root of all evil. In 1 Timothy 6, Paul catalogs the consequences of those who covet. This is what he says when you covet after things. You fall into temptation and a snare. They fall into many foolish and hurtful lusts. They drowned in destruction and perdition. They err from the faith, and they pierce themselves through with many sorrows. So I don't want all those things. I don't want to be uh, coveting things that I shouldn't have, but I want to have a relationship with God and understand that His blessing isn't necessarily a new truck. It's not necessarily living in the biggest house. Um, it, it's not all those material things, but being blessed by God is so much more. We understand that gain is not godliness, but in the Bible, in 1 Timothy 6, 5 through 6, it says that godliness with contentment is great gain. So gain is not godliness, but godliness with contentment is gain. The challenge for this generation and for generations past is to be focused on the things that matter. To be focused on the here, hereafter rather than the here and now. So to be focused on the future, on the things that are going to last in eternity. One of my prayers that I pray is when I talk to people, I say, God, give me the words that are going to matter for eternity. Give me something that's really to say that's really going to matter. I don't want to say things that are just going to be shallow. I don't want to, um, in my ministry, to talk to people um, and, and things just not matter. But I want to say the things that are going to matter for an eternity. I want to, I, I want to be focused on the things that are going to matter for an eternity. This, this life and things that we go through and the things that we have are just going to be a, a speck. It's going to be a vapor in the wind. But we have an eternity to live for. And that's what we should be looking towards every day with contentment. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you join me tomorrow.